now on Sunrise, neck and neck at the finish line in New Hampshire. This victory here is the beginning of the end for Donald Trump. The new numbers coming in this morning. Plus, we have beaten the odds every step of the way. The surprise twist for Senator Amy Klobuchar. Indicted again. Actor Jussie Smollett facing new charges this morning for an alleged hate crime police say never happened. Alzheimer's is a journey no family wants to be on, and now it's made a stop here at CARE 11. I feel like he was larger than life. Our colleague Carla Halt shares her long goodbye to her father. And it's been a struggle her whole life. But now this business owner is using her height to put herself above the competition. An inspiring story this week's Women Crushing It Wednesday. It's Wednesday, February 12th. Care Love and Sunrise starts now. You're walking out the door to temperatures near the freezing mark. Ooh. Almost balmy because oh, that's yeah. all about to change. Oh yeah, by the time you head home from work, the wind chill could be below zero. And then it's going to stick around for a while. Yeah, I'm already feeling cold, so I'm out of here. Oh, you're See y'all. Oh, yeah. On. But we want to know, are you guys sick of winter yet? Look, I don't think it's been that bad, no, but hasn't. we want to hear your rant. The rant line is open, so text us. Get out your phone, text us. 763-797-7215. And Sven, I'll let you explain yourself. <laughs> yeah, uh, so far the fourth warmest winter uh, since 2000. So we can handle it. But hey, this is a video just in from the Grand Forks area. This is where we have blizzard conditions this morning. That's a sign of what's coming to Western Minnesota. Yeah, not good looking there. Uh, we're not talking about a lot of snow, but it's that half inch or so of snow that's going to be whipping around by those 40 mile per hour winds that we're going to expect to descend south across the western part of the state. Out ahead of all of it, we are mild this morning. 31 here, 32 in South St. Paul. So morning temperatures, no problem. Low 30s out there, but you can see where the Arctic front is. It's that broken line of snow that's just moved through the Fargo area. Again, creating those blizzard conditions off to the northwest. Western Minnesota will get in on some of that too. Not expecting that here, but we are going to get a little light snow and gusty winds and falling temperatures. All right, thanks, Ben. And taking a look at your sunrise drive. And maybe, maybe you're catching a flight this morning at MSB International Airport. So looking at the roads around there, 494 and Highway 5, looking smooth, looking good. Traffic is moving along very nicely. No crashes to speak of in the metro right now, guys. I'd like to hear that. Thanks, Ellery. Polls are closed and results still coming from New Hampshire after the nation's first primary. Yeah, that's right. With 97% of precincts reporting, NBC is projecting Bernie Sanders as the winner. And right behind him is former mayor Pete Buttigieg. The big surprise, though, everyone is talking about this morning is Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar coming in third. John Croman has been on the campaign trail with Klobuchar all week. He was up late last night. He joins us live from New Hampshire this morning. And John, this has to be a big deal for the Klobuchar campaign. Hey, Chris and Alicia, definitely is extremely big deal because it helps convince potential donors that she's for real. It helps convince potential voters in other primary states that she is a viable alternative. As you mentioned, we've been on the ground here in New Hampshire since Sunday, and we've sensed this surge happening, but yesterday we learned that it translated to actual votes. Hello, America. I'm Amy Klobuchar, and I will beat Donald Trump. <laughs> An exciting finish to an election day that began in a haze. And we're not just talking about the weather. Exit polling shows that more than half of the voters in the Granite State were truly undecided heading in. I've never seen so many voters turning out who were undecided. I had people coming up to me today who were saying that they were making up their minds over the weekend, that they were making up their minds in their car on the way to vote. These are their actual results as they were read off in my ward. I got to Amy and he said 400 and I went, Ugh. By nightfall, it was clear. That, I'm thrilled with. <laughs> Klobuchar momentum was for real. My heart is full tonight. While there are still ballots left to count, we have beaten the odds every step of the way. What do you want to tell folks in Minnesota tonight? Um, that I love them and their support has meant everything to me and um, we could, I wouldn't be here if they weren't all there helping and it just means everything. 
And as you know, next in line uh, for Amy Klobuchar's campaign is going to be Nevada in South Carolina. And uh, one of the challenges she is going to face is just hiring enough staff. Um, the Sanders campaign is pretty organized in a lot of states. The uh, Bloomberg campaign has purchased, you might say, a lot of the potential staffers for other campaigns. Um, they're paying them pretty well. They're doing a lot of hiring. So just trying to get the staff build up in those other states will be a challenge for, for both Amy Klobuchar and Mayor Pete. But uh, um, she's ready to go and see what happens next. Yeah, well, she's we'll overcome. back, I guess, in about a half hour to talk some more. Yeah, she's overcome the odds so far. And that's right, John, you're not done work yet. We'll see you in 30 minutes. Thanks a lot. All right, another big surprise of the night was Elizabeth Warren. She only got 9% of the vote. And if you're wondering where Joe Biden is on this list, according to multiple reports, he left New Hampshire before results even came in, and he ended up in fifth. Now here's a look at today's other top stories in your morning rush. Minnesota's 2020 legislative session is officially underway. And there's a lot to get to this session, specifically a bonding bill with the governor, House Democrats and Senate Republicans all having different ideas for how much to spend. Plus, there's a budget surplus of more than a billion dollars. And once again, everyone disagrees on how to spend that money. Also big topics, including gun rights, marijuana, health care costs, not to mention emergency insulin with once again, Republicans and Democrats each having their own idea on how to solve this problem. This morning, Egan's mayor is expected to make his first court appearance following a DWI arrest. Last month, Michael McGuire was behind the wheel of an SUV that Egan police found stuck at an intersection. A criminal complaint says McGuire took a breathalyzer test and blew twice the legal limit. Pet owners beware. Local veterinarians say counterfeit medications are being sold online. The Lakeville Family Pet Clinic issued a warning last week after spotting fake heart guard heartworm medication being sold on Amazon. Care 11 took those concerns to Amazon and it has now removed them from the site. The best way to cope with losing fan favorite Jason Zucker winning. The Wild do that last night at XL Energy Center. Team beats the Vegas Golden Knights 4 zip. Meanwhile, in his first game with Pittsburgh, Zucker's new team lost to the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that's our Wednesday morning rush. All right, now to our digital dive. This morning, a lot of you are talking on the CARE 11 Facebook page about something too many of us can relate to, Alzheimer's disease. Right now, more than 5 million people are living with it, and our very own Carla Holt is sharing her family's story because she watched the disease slowly take her father's life. I'm standing there in front of him, and I'm looking at him, and I just, like, this overwhelming feeling of I just miss him. You know, he's right in front of me, and he's, and I can hold his hand, and I can touch his face and I miss him. You're my dad, you know that? You're my daddy. I love you. Mm -hmm. I love you. You're not alone. Bob Holt suffered from Alzheimer's for nine years, and through that time, Carla says she went through so many goodbyes, each of them so heartbreaking. Bob died last year, and now Carla continues her fight to end this disease. But the disease's progression isn't slowing down. In fact, the Alzheimer's Association says that someone develops it every 65 seconds and projects that 14 million people will have Alzheimer's by the year 2050. Now, more than 700 people have reacted to this story on our CARE 11 Facebook page, sharing their wonderful photos of loved ones lost and still alive. Aaron says, lost my grandpa a few years back to this disease. He was my weekly fishing partner since I was a kid. Fishing will never be the same. And Marie shared this photo of her father saying that he didn't know her name for several years, but within hours of his death, he opened his eyes and called her by her nickname. So if you want to watch Carla's story from last night, head to our CARE 11 app. It's well worth your time. Bring the tissues because she goes through a lot. And Alzheimer's, such a cruel disease. Yes. So sad. Yeah, and a lot of people can relate. I mean, in my family, my grandmother I went yeah. through it and it was tough. And uh, yeah, watching Carla's stories, it kind of brought me back to that. But yeah, like you say, bring the tissues. You'll need it. Yeah. All right, let's go to Sven for one thing weather. What's going on, Sven? Well, big changes in the weather today. We got a mild start to the day in the low 30s, some midday light snow, just a dusting out of that. But then winds pick up, temperatures drop. It's going to be sub-zero by this time tomorrow. And looking outside at your commute right now at 609, things look good across the metro, including 694 at Snelling Ave. All right, it is Women Crushing It Wednesday here on Care, Love & Sunrise. So each week we introduce you to a woman having an impact right here in Minnesota. Today we highlight the sisters behind Amelie Tolley, 
fashion line aimed at making sure tall women are included in the conversation around body positivity. There's just so much attention that comes. I don't know that I can go a day, honestly, if I step out to go to the grocery store or whatever, I can't go a day without somebody commenting on some aspect of my height. Day after day after day, that really takes a toll. I'm six foot four, actually just shy, but I always round up. And my sister's 5'10". So we ourselves have experienced a lifetime of shopping experiences that are frustrating. We were just so kind of overwhelmed with this feeling of wanting to make a difference that we decided it was time to give it a go. My sister and I uh, started a clothing line that really caters to the needs and the proportions for tall women and tall girls. We've really had an opportunity to connect with women all over the world. It's literally what gets me out of bed every morning. But that being said, starting a business is hard. The best thing that we've learned is that it's like the culmination of a lot of small steps that start to come together to make bigger impacts. We really want to start a larger dialogue about body positivity as it relates to tall women. People send us family photos where they're decked out and head to toe in our clothing line, and I don't even know how to put into words because I always tell people, I don't think that there's a larger honor than you choosing to wear our clothes for family photos that are sacred and special and something that you plan to hang on to for many, many years to come. So the fact that you're wearing our clothes um, because you felt confident and made you feel great, you felt like your best self in that, literally the highest honor. Pretty incredible art. Amelie Tolly was recently featured in a Women's Wear Daily article, and FabFitFun picked them as one of the best denim choices for tall women. Well, that's quite an honor. And that's as a, being this height since like middle school, finding jeans tough. is tough for a woman. Yeah, I believe it. A lot of ask, people ask me if I was waiting for floods for so many years. <laughs> so you many like years. Short pants. <laughs> All right. Do you guys remember Jesse Smollett, the actor accused of faking a hate crime in Chicago? Well, he's got more to worry about this morning. We're going to explain. It's a growing trend we're seeing in some adults, skipping tradition to fulfill a major life goal. We're following one woman's journey to become a single parent by choice. Students in St. Paul today are sending out Valentine's Day cards, but there's a twist. We'll tell you about it coming up.